Good morning. NATO defense ministers meet today and tomorrow at a pivotal moment for our security. Over the last weeks, we have seen the most serious escalation of the war since the invasion in February. Russia is mobilizing tens of thousands of new troops. They are trying to illegally annex new Ukrainian lands. And we have seen the indiscriminate uh, strikes against Ukrainian cities. And then, of course, we also have heard the veiled nuclear uh, threats uh, coming from uh, Moscow. All of this makes uh, this the most serious escalation since uh, February. Today we will meet uh, with um, the Ukrainian Defense Minister, Minister Resnikov, uh, and the message from NATO allies will be uh, that we are steadfast in our support to Ukraine, that we are prepared for a long haul, and that we will support them for as long as it takes. There will be a meeting with uh, Minister Resnikov um, uh, in the US-led uh, contact group for Ukraine, and also dinner with NATO ministers uh, later on today, where we will uh, discuss, address how to ramp up support for uh, Ukraine, and the top priority will be more air defense for uh, Ukraine. We'll also address uh, <coughs> our deterrence and defense, and um, uh, also then um, uh, address how to replenish our stocks, because allies have provided uh, support to Ukraine by reducing NATO stocks of ammunition or weapons. Uh, this has been the right thing to do, but of course we need to address how to uh, refill those stocks. And therefore, I expect that the ministers will agree to review our guidelines for uh, stocks uh, and also to uh, engage more with industry. NATO is a unique platform. Uh, we have the NATO defense planning process. We have the capability targets. Uh, we have the work on standardization, on interoperability. All of this uh, are unique NATO tools that enable us to engage with industry and provide the industry with the long-term demand they need uh, to invest more in uh, production capacity so we can produce more weapons, more ammunition, more of those capabilities we need <coughs> both to uh, ensure our own deterrence and defense but also to continue to provide support to Ukraine. Resilience will be also an issue that will be addressed. Um, uh, the resilience of critical infrastructure, the importance of that has been demonstrated by the sabotage against the pipelines in the, in the Baltic uh, seas. Um, and then we will also have a meeting of the, uh, of the NATO defense ministers or the session where we will uh, address our missions and operations from Iraq uh, to Kosovo. <coughs> and there will be a meeting uh, of uh, NATO's nuclear planning group. This is a routine, uh, long uh, uh, planned meeting uh, where we will address uh, uh, how to continue to ensure that uh, NATO's deterrent remain safe, secure and effective. And with that, I'm ready to take uh, questions. <coughs> Secretary General, what is NATO's response in case of a Russian nuclear strike anywhere? NATO is a defensive alliance. Uh, NATO is there to prevent conflict, to prevent uh, a war. And uh, therefore, uh, we have strengthened our deterrence uh, to send a very clear message to uh, Russia that uh, we are there to protect and defend uh, all allies. Um, we have seen, of course, the speculations about uh, the use of a low yield uh, a nuclear weapon in uh, Ukraine. And uh, uh, we have conveyed clearly uh, to Russia that. Uh, uh, this will have uh, severe consequences for Russia. Uh, Russia knows that the nuclear war uh, cannot be won, must never be uh, fought. And um, uh, we are, of course, also closely monitoring um, uh, the Russian nuclear posture. Uh, we haven't seen any changes in the uh, nuclear posture of uh, Russia, but we will remain vigilant. We will uh, uh, continue to monitor closely uh, because the nuclear threats, the nuclear uh, uh, rhetoric and the veiled threats from, uh, from, from Russia are dangerous and uh, reckless. Uh, good morning, Secretary General. There are still a no small number of countries that have not uh, reached the 2% target from eight years back and, and haven't presented a plan to reach the target. 
What's your message to them? And that there's this difference in, in, in spending on uh, military material uh, affect uh, the solidarity within the alliance? So we welcome, I welcome that all NATO allies uh, since 2014 have uh, increased uh, uh, defense spending. And this is necessary in a more dangerous world to invest more in our security. And that's exactly what NATO allies uh, uh, do. Uh, since uh, uh, since uh, 2014, uh, NATO allies have uh, added more than 350 billion extra dollars for uh, defense across Europe and Canada. We welcome that. Uh, then uh, I welcome also that more and more allies meet the 2% uh, uh, guideline. Uh, and of course, I will continue to, uh, to work for and urge those allies who are uh, 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 not meeting the guidelines or don't have plans in place to meet them uh, to do uh, so. So, how do you Someone's consider the there. role of. Okay, sorry. So, what changed now <coughs> so that uh, member states are ready to provide air defense? And what does that mean for the follow up of this member state? I welcome that uh, NATO allies uh, are providing uh, air defense systems. Um, that is extremely important. And I welcome the recent announcement by, uh, by uh, Germany and also the, uh, the delivery of German air defense systems uh, to Ukraine. And I think we all have seen why this is so important. Uh, the, the horrific, the indiscriminate uh, attacks against Ukrainian uh, cities, uh, civilian killed, uh, civilian critical infrastructure destroyed, uh, and, and not least the attacks on the, on, on the energy um, uh, system, the energy infrastructure, uh, is serious uh, as we approach winter. So all of this uh, demonstrates the urgent need uh, for uh, more air defense for Ukraine. Allies have provided air defense, but we need even more. We need different types of air defense, short range, long range uh, air defense systems to take uh, uh, ballistic missiles, cruise missiles, drones, different systems for different tasks. Um, and then, of course, uh, Ukraine is a big country, um, many cities. So uh, we need to scale up to be able to help Ukraine defend even more cities and more territory against uh, uh, horrific uh, Russian uh, attacks against uh, their civilian populations. According to NATO, what is the role of Lukashenko regime as an ally of Vladimir Putin in this war? Well, I expect uh, that uh, the Lukashenko regime uh, 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 stop being complicit to uh, this war. Um, we have seen how uh, Belarus has been used as a staging area uh, for uh, um, missile launches, air attacks against uh, uh, Ukraine, and. Uh, and uh, uh, President Lukashenko should uh, stop uh, helping, uh, supporting the uh, Russian war efforts. How do you see the situation in the Western Balkans bearing in mind war in Ukraine? Western Balkans is important for uh, NATO. We have uh, a history there. We have been there for many years. Uh, we helped to end the two brutal wars in the 1990s. Uh, we have our, the K4 mission in Kosovo, helping to uh, uh, secure stability. Uh, um, the free movement of all uh, uh, communities uh, in, um, in, um, in, uh, in Kosovo. We have uh, the headquarters in, in, uh, in Sarajevo and we are also working closely with the European Union. The NATO troops in Kosovo helps to support the diplomatic efforts of uh, the European Union the, in the Pristina Belgrade dialogue. And we also work together with uh, EU in Bosnia Herzegovina. And of course, we have also members uh, in, uh, in the Western Balkans. Uh, the, uh, the, the two newest members of the alliance uh, are actually uh, countries in the Western Balkans, uh, North Macedonia and uh, Montenegro. So North Macedonia, uh, the, the Western Balkans is important for NATO and therefore we continue to focus on uh, that region. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you.